I think I'll deviate from the norm. You're not supposed to comment on your own introduction, but since the Alaska thing is out there, I will say with some pride that I covered Sarah Palin when she was on the Wasilla City Council uh, back in 1993 and had the uh, good fortune to go back and pay her old town a visit last year with a team of reporters from the Times, which was fun. Uh, but I've been sent up here to try to answer this question, how do I define Reed and in what ways has it defined me personally or professionally? Uh, well, given that I never took a multiple choice test at Reed, I think I'll take the liberty of answering in essay form and throwing out <laughs> more than one word. And I've been puzzling over this the last few weeks and I came up with, as my definition, rigorous, intense, critical, audacious, and I was going to say subversive, but then I looked that word up in the dictionary this afternoon, and I realized that it does actually have a negative connotation in many circles. Though now that Reed has referred to us as fellow travelers, maybe subversive is, is okay. Uh, but in all seriousness, the rigor of the place is, is what's really stayed with me and, and, and made the deepest impression on me. And I, I remember an early formative experience when I was a freshman and I, I went off for my first uh, Hume uh, conference, uh, paper conference, having written my first paper for Lisa Steinman, who was a terrific conference leader. And I had come from this, you know, very achievement-minded New York City high school Bronx science where, uh, oh, we have some science people in the audience. Well, <laughs> not, not to, well, not to speak ill of science, but, you know, it's a big place. and. And uh, you didn't always get the same kind of personal attention that I immediately found myself getting. And that I had always been able to meet the form of a good paper. You know, you got your introduction, you got your body, you got your conclusion, spell the words correctly, a nice phrase, a little research, and you know, you're done. And Lisa Steinman looked at me and said, well, it's nice, nice paper, it's a nicely written paper. Now let's talk about your argument. And then she just ripped me to pieces and uh, helped me kind of put an argument together. And I mean, from that, uh, there's an obvious moral, which is that content matters. And, and content matters at, at Reed. And, and given that I've spent the last, oh, 20 some odd years writing newspaper stories for a living, um, I, I think that that, that that really was formative. That was really an, an, an important experience. Intensity, uh, the intensity not only of that experience, but of so many read experiences. I mean, even when readies are having fun, they're intense. There's, there, there, there's a, a kind of seriousness of life there that I, I think is unique. And, and frankly, I'm glad to have graduated from it. Uh, and I'm glad to have lived through it. I, I remember with great fondness writing papers at Reed, which in my case, always involved in all-nighter. And it wasn't, wasn't so much procrastinating. It, it, it was that we all had these shared texts that we'd all read, you know, as freshmen, and then most of us took Hume 220. I mean, you sort of quickly figure out that the guy in your Hume conference who thinks that he's discovered that in the eighth book of Plato's Republic, there's actually something that doesn't quite make sense. You know, you tune that out pretty quickly, and you move on. And you, and you get to a place where there's a shared kind of intellectual platform to debate almost anything, and, and to go into the cave you know, of, of, of paper writing, to take two seminal texts and compare them to one another, or to, to use an argument to try to you know, push further. All of these experiences that I had at Reed gave me this sense that you can figure anything out. If, if you're humble in your approach, and if you take the time to read deeply and to find people who have thought about issues for longer than you have, uh, and, and you, you have the integrity to just really try to get to the bottom of something, there's almost nothing that you can't demystify if, if you, you know, try hard enough. I don't want to leave the impression, though, that, that Reed, for me, was this abstract experience. I mean, one of the things that I think is, is the great strength of the college, I and mean, I, I think most of us know that there's often this misperception that a reed is either you know, a flaky place, it's the school of underwater basket weaving, or it's a school where you can take anything, and you know, neither of those are true. Some of my favorite classes at Reed were uh, my constitutional law classes with Steve Kapsch, which flowed directly from you know, the debates we had as freshmen uh, trying to make sense of Antigone or you know, explore 
ethics through Aristotle, and now we're talking about things like uh, racial discrimination and busing and uh, right to abortion, but with that same very rigorous, very intense, uh, theoretically grounded, coherent way. I, it, it, was, it was just a very, just an enormously stimulating place to be. I, I'm constantly grateful uh, for, for having gone to read, and, and I often feel a sense, I mean, back to this idea of, of subversion, that uh, it is our place to look around and test shared assumptions, to take on conventional wisdom and try to uh, extract what's useful and get rid of what's not useful, but ultimately you know, gain a little enlightenment. And I feel like that must sound grandiose, and I'm sure that uh, I know that I'm sometimes uh, difficult for my editors to deal with in, in the newsroom and, and my colleagues, because I have this sense of this is important, and, and we have to pay attention to the words that we use, and we have to, we have to take seriously uh, what we say and what we print and what we think, that it all matters. And I, I do feel that, that I was deeply imprinted by that way of living back when I was a, a college student at Reed. For, for that, I'm, I'm very grateful. Just to throw out a couple of sort of uh, tangible examples of what I'm talking about, and then I, I'll turn it over for, for other people's thoughts. In, in my econ coverage now, I, I have a, a strong sense that there are a lot of stories in the newspaper that, you know, if I weren't there typing that day, somebody else would write that story. Uh, a job report comes out, or we discover that the GDP contracted, or, you know, there's a piece of news that we have to deal with. The stories that are most important to me are, are, are stories that I have a strong sense would not be told if I weren't the one looking around. And, and that, that, again, is, is something that, that I think goes back to that experience at Reed of, of being encouraged to be not only rigorous and intense, but, but a little subversive, to, to look for those areas uh, that aren't being sufficiently uh, explored and, and tested. In China, where I worked for five years, I, I kind of specialized in, in deconstructing the, the messy details of privatization of companies. I was always very distrustful of the neatness of reports and prescriptions you could get from, um, in some cases, academics. No offense to the present company. Great respect for academics. But mostly uh, analysts you know, sitting in air-conditioned offices in Hong Kong who had perfect numbers for everything and a perfect explanation of how this enormously complicated place operated. And, and I, I just had this gut-level sense that you had to go out to uh, places where life was actually happening and meet people who were not paid to talk to me as a, as a newspaper reporter. And again, to, to test my assumptions. I, I had that experience again in, in Iraq in 2003 where I, I was sent in in uh, April and May with the assignment to go sort of figure out uh, what was going to happen with the future of the Iraqi oil industry. And other people who had that brief were mostly listening to these briefings in, in Baghdad or uh, taught, reading Department of Energy reports. And, and I, 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 the part of me that I, I would call you know, the Reedy felt that I, I had this kind of larger mission, this, this, this mission that entailed actually going out to oil installations, sitting in people's living, living rooms who had worked at state oil companies, and trying to piece together, well, what had been here before? How had things worked? And what was their experience with the Americans and Halliburton, KBR? And, and through that experience, got a very early glimpse of, of the obvious tensions that were then taking place between Iraqis and Americans. Ultimately, just to, just to sum up, I, I feel that from going to read, I, I am infused with this sense that it is my responsibility to never accept a conventional explanation, to, to constantly uh, be critical, and to, to push to try to get to something that approximates reality. And for that, I'm, I'm very glad to have, to have had those experiences. And thank you very much.